Hello, continuing with lesson 4, dedicated to the study of the electric potential, we are going to see how to calculate it in the case of discrete systems of charge. To do this we are going to analyze first how is the potential of the field created by a point charge, then by a distribution of point charges, and finally we are going to see the concept of surfaces and what potentials and their most relevant properties. The first thing is that when I have a point charge or any distribution, I always have an associated electric field and as a consequence, an electric potential, which we have called V and we saw in a previous presentation. Let's consider, for example, a positive point charge Q, which is the simplest case, and two points that we are going to put align the three, because it is the simplest case to solve mathematically, although it is not necessary that it is up to the distribution. What we have to calculate is the potential difference between points P and Q, for which we will follow this path. By definition of potential difference, what we have to solve is this integral. Concretely, the electric field, since the charge is positive, is repulsive, it is moving away from the charge, and therefore forms zero degrees with the movement itself, with the differential of R. Therefore, developing the scalar product as the module of the first vector by the module of the second by the cosine of the angle, which forms zero in this case. I am left with this expression. The cosine of zero is one, and the modulus of the electric field, as we know from lesson three, is this expression, electric constant, modulus of charge divided by distance squared. The modulus of a positive charge is itself. So I'm left with this final expression. For the case of positive charges, if the charge is negative, we can see that it is a practically identical development with the following caveats. The first is that the electric field is now attractive. It is directed in the opposite direction than in the previous cases. Therefore, this angle is now 180 degrees per radians, therefore cosine minus one. The second peculiarity is the modulus of the charge. Since the charge is negative, the modulus of the charge is minus Q. For example, if the charge is minus three coulombs, its modulus is minus minus three. Since this minus cancels with this one, the expression is exactly the same. So the integral that I will proceed to solve is common to both cases. This integral gives me the result that we see here, in which I am going to remove the minus sin minus in exchange for exchanging the limits of integration. So I am left with a simpler expression where we can see that it is exactly the same expression by changing point P and point R. Since VP minus VR is this subtraction, then minuend with minuend, subtrahend with subtrahend, and the expression of the potential is the one we see here. The potential is electric constant multiplied by charge divided by distance. Unlike the electric field, which was an analogous expression in its modulus, only it went with distance squared. Note that positive charges give positive potential because Q is positive. If Q is negative, the potential I will get is negative. And if what I have is not a single point charge, but a set of them, for example, three, as we see in this figure, where I have mixed positive and negative. Well, in that case, we already know that the electric field is the sum of the electric fields created by each charge separately. And what we are going to see is what to do with the case of the potential. I want to take the potential difference between point P and point R that we have here. And for any point on that path, the electric field is the sum of the electric fields. So if I want to get the potential difference, by definition, it is this integral, but the electric field by the principle of superposition that you already know is the sum of the electric fields. That is this summation. I have therefore the integral of a sum. And we already know that by mathematics, it is equivalent to the sum of the integrals, which I'm putting like this. And each of those integrals is the potential difference, by definition, created by each individual particle. That is, it's taking the potential difference due to charge one, due to charge two, and so on, and adding them all up. Well, instead of doing this sum of differences, I can do the sum of the minuends, the sum of the subtracts, and subtract them. Comparing terms, this subtraction equal to this subtraction, you can easily deduce that is that the potential is the sum of partial potentials, which is what we are aiming at here. Well, this result is analogous to the one we already obtained in lesson three for electric fields, that the electric field of a superposition of charges was the sum of the fields created by each one separately. The most relevant difference, apart from the fact that it is potential instead of electric field, is that the electric field is a vector sum, and here what we have is a numerical scalar sum, normal and current. Here we have the development of that expression a little bit longer, and here we have the application to the case of three-point charges, in the same way as it could be done with two or with 2,508. 
Finally, we are going to see, or we are going to give a new concept, that of equipotential surface, which is the set of points with the same value of potential. For example, here I have at my fingertips, I have a potential of 20 volts. I can draw all the points that have 20 volts and the whole will be a surface. Likewise, I could draw the surface of potential minus 13 with 4. For example, what do they look like in the case of a point charge? Here we have a point charge with the familiar field line distribution and here we have the potential for that point charge. If what I want to get is a bunch of points that have the same V and K and Q in turn are constant, it seems obvious that the only way is for R to be constant, i.e. all points that have the same distance to the point charge have the same potential. That set of points is obviously by geometric definition a spherical surface whose center is at the charge itself. Here we can see that representation. That would be what is called the equipotential lines. I have not drawn here the surfaces, which would obviously be in 3D. They would be spheres, but the section of those surfaces with the plane of the screen. These intersections, which is the most common way of demonstrating equipotential surfaces for simplicity, are called equipotential lines, and we are going to use them from here on. But let us never lose sight of the fact that in reality all we are seeing are surfaces. By the way, a detail that we are going to analyze in more detail below is that we can see that equipotential surfaces in field planes are perpendicular to each other. We are going to see that this property is general. To do this, we will consider any equipotential surface, as we have here in green, and two points P and R, which here I represent them separately so that the drawing can be seen, but in reality they would be infinitely close, that is, with the most powerful microscope available, you would be able to see the two separate points. The vector that joins them is the one that we call, as its usual notation, differential of R, and the scalar product of the electric field by differential of R would be the infinitesimal variation of potential that speaks from one point to another. However, you see that I put that by differential of R is not a small potential, but exactly zero, and this is the case. There is no potential difference, neither small nor large, none between the two points, because they are of the same equipotential surface. Therefore, the potential is the same of the two, and the subtraction is zero. However, we know that the electric field is not going to be hard in general, and the differential of R, evidently, however small, is not the null vector either, so there is only a third explanation for this scalar product to be zero, and that is that the two multiplied vectors are perpendicular to each other. Important issue, because that means that whatever segment I make on an equipotential surface, the electric field is perpendicular to all of them. For example, if we imagine here in the palm of my hand that the field must be perpendicular to this segment, to, this, to any segment that I put here, there is only one possible orientation, the perpendicular to the hand. And that is the final result. The electric field at any point is perpendicular to the equipotential surface passing through that point. As it has happened in the case of the point charge, and we can see in these others, with two equal charges, two opposite charges, and two of opposite signs, and one double than the other, distributions that you have seen previously in their field lines, and here we are also showing in green color the equipotential lines. To see the surface, we would have to make the revolution to see it in 3D. And we can see that indeed the perpendicularity is fulfilled at any point, such as, for example, this one here, or this one here, or any of these. Other important properties are that the density of equipotential surfaces is proportional to the electric field. Logically, the closer they are to each other, it means that in a smaller path, the integral gives me the same value, then the field must be larger. In addition, the equipotential surfaces cannot be cut because we would have points to be of two surfaces with two potentials at the same time, which is not possible. And finally, if we remember that at great distances of a charge distribution, the field lines end up being radial. For the corresponding perpendicularity, the equipotential surfaces will have to be spherical. So what have we seen in this topic? Summarizing first the expression of the point charge created, that is the potential created by a point charge, quite simple to remember. Secondly, that for the case of distributions, what I have to do is to add the corresponding expressions of the points. And finally, we have given the concept of equipotential surface and the most relevant properties. Thank you very much for your attention.